On today's episode of Bite Sized Arrow, I'm going to go over external loads, the flight envelope, aka the VN diagram, and go over a practical example. Let's say that you're a loads engineer and you're just trying to make a living. You got your structural design criteria and you need to develop a set of aerodynamic and inertial loads based on the flight envelope. You're going to do this in equivalent airspeed because, you know, it represents a speed with a constant dynamic pressure uh, regardless of the aircraft's altitude. And it's basically the true airspeed corrected for a difference in density at the air at the altitude compared with sea level. So you can get your aerodynamics loads through lots of different methods. There's, you know, computational methods like CFD. This is for the external aerodynamic loads, I mean, rather than the internal loads. And essentially you want to get your air load distributions, like your lift distributions, and you can use wind tunnel and flight tests to verify uh, your data points. But essentially, you know, the VN diagram shows your aerodynamic and inertial loads. There are more loads that of course have to be considered when you design your airframe like you know landing and taxi loads cabin fuel pressures crash loads propulsion system loads control surface loads loads generated by cargo or stores and basically a ton of different loads like your uh jacking and towing load and don't laugh and door loads anyways you get the picture so maybe you've come to this video because you want to get the vn diagram so you have your vertical load factor in g's is a measure of the force exerted on an aircraft due to gravity so one g is the normal force of gravity we feel when we're just standing on the ground so let's talk about the loads on the aircraft so let's go over stall speed for transport aircraft we can't handle more than 1g in the negative direction 2.5 in the positive but as you can see we have some safety factors so where the stall curve meets the limit load that's our maneuver point n equals one for cruise max loads are with the flaps up and then we got our dive speed which is the maximum speed an aircraft can fly when it's diving downward without you know causing any damage then vc is our design cruising speed and here n equals one so anyways that's the design cruising speed we draw our lines and get our vn diagram but wait you didn't mention gust lines don't worry i got you so consider an aircraft that is encountering a vertical gust or executing like a turn or pulley up maneuver now consider uh the gust speed that's ude which is kind of uh, defined by far part 25 but as you can kind of see let me just kind of draw you how the equivalent gust velocity changes as uh, in terms of altitude and also the speeds and you can uh, pause the video to see that for longer. Anyways, so as a result of the gust, which changes the uh, load factor, we can see that the lift distribution changes, and we've got 1 plus kg times the lift curve slope times the gust load times the dynamic pressure over the wing loading. And kg is the gust alleviation factor that accounts for the fact that the airplane flies into the gust, and that does not happen instantaneously. So then we get ug, which is the load factor gradient, where a positive load factor gradient indicates that when the aircraft speed increases, the load factor increases. So we solve for n, all the coefficients come together, and so that's our load factor per part 25. Now I just want to show you the impact of the positive gust on airplane lift coefficient and also the wing root bending moment. Our wing weight can improve if we mitigate gust loads. Okay, as promised, let's do a practical example. So we have our equation for the load factor n, where you know the load factor is changed as a result of a maneuver or a gust. If things are normal, airplanes can handle load factor 2.5 g's in the positive direction, 1 g in the negative, and withstand forces up to 2.5 times its weight. Now when there's maneuvers or turbulence from gust, it can handle like up to 3.8 g's or more in certain conditions. The next time you encounter turbulence, don't worry, we're built for it. So through a practical example, let's look at gust loads on an ATR-42-600 type vehicle. Just to mention, C average is the average cord. So our design cruise speed here is about 300 kTAS at 25,000 feet, and then we want to get our equivalent airspeed, and we can get the Mach number at cruise by dividing by the speed of sound, and we get about 0.5. So we want to calculate our whip curve slope. Some people just do 2 pi, and this is the equation I like to use. It's a Sequoia's equation, takes into account the sweep and also the Mach number. I think this is pretty good for uh, transport aircraft. And so now we get our load, which is about 1.33, and then mu g is 42.5, kg is about 0.78 and now we can get our gust load factor. So as you can see, this is lower than the limit maneuver load factor of 2.50. And so we want to know how like the higher aspect ratio wing or lower operating altitude might affect the gust. It increases it actually. Wing loading also has an effect. Anyways, I promise I'm going to have higher quality videos in the future. As right now, I'm suffering through my master's thesis. But I hope that this is a short video to give you the basics instead of having to watch a 30 minute video. See you next time.